right guys, so on the same note as my probably previous video where I checked out Ty's plane and talked about how it's one of the most high value bush planes, I recognize that he kind of fell into unique circumstances and you can't buy the plane he has for the same price he bought it for anymore. So Brian has a Series 7 kit Fox that he built and I think you probably did the most like value-minded build you could do and your performance is higher than pretty much everyone else's kit fox aside from maybe mine but even mine i don't know with the new wing and the slats you might have me so you want to give us just a walk around tell us about your plane yeah so it's a model 7 uh originally the kit was a super sport the options that came with it we have you know the airfoil shaped tail it was a standard wing initially actually when i bought it it was a second hand kit Oh, so, I, so I did get a little bit of a discount over like if you were to order one now and it didn't have any landing gear So that also knocks price of the kit down and if you're planning on going to bush gear with Tony's TK1 or whatever That's a good way to do it. Yeah, so it didn't have any gear. Uh, that was cool because I was planning on doing this gear and then um, No firewall forward at all And that's why I picked up this kit because I want to try something a little bit different. So um, it took two years to build a lot of that time was spent after the first year of figuring out the firewall forward. So if you're looking to get into this and you order one that's supported from the factory with a firewall forward that comes to the factory, then you can get it done a little bit quicker if you have the time. So, yeah. And it's a lot easier too, just because it's already figured out. There's some headaches initially with some cooling issues, but I think we got it all worked out now. Yeah. And tell me what, what engine are you running? So this is a Yamaha Apex. Um, this is kind of made popular by Steve Henry's run, was running it for quite a while. I actually was introduced to this plane, my hangar neighbor up when I lived in Oregon, he pulled one out of his sled and put it on a Rans S6. And really? He designed his own gearbox and I thought he was crazy until I saw it perform. And that thing went so fast it actually started to collapse the wing because those are those like hang glider style ribs in Oh it. yeah. So you had to rebuild the wing because of it. But that kind of piqued my interest and the power to weight ratio is really a selling factor because it's Overall, my firewall forward is the same as a Rotex 912 UOS, and it should be about 10 pounds heavier, but I made a custom carbon cowling and shaved 10 pounds off the factory cowling. So you could obviously get a Rotex 10 pounds lighter if you did the same thing to Rotex cowling, but um, the power is 160 horse, the way it sits. It's normally aspirated, so it's not turbocharged yet. <laughs> yet? I don't know that it needs it. You know, a lot of people ask, why didn't you go right to the edge performance turbocharged because uh, it doesn't need it. This is designed for 100 horse and it's got 160 and I'm take off and then I pull power back. Yeah. So I don't use that power for cruise. Initially, kind of in my mind, I thought that would be what would happen is you cruise like 130 all everywhere you go. But the RPM that this engine runs at, that's kind of the trade-off. So it runs at such high RPM, you want to back it out and cruise just to save the engine because you can tell it's working hard when it's up around 9,000 RPM. 9,000 is that? And what do you cruise at? Uh, cruise about 8,200. Okay. You know, so that gives me about, when I don't have the slats on with this bigger wing, it gives me about 106 to 108 cruise, which is pretty decent. And that's pitched out more for cruise because the takeoff performance is so insane that you don't need to pitch it for takeoff. Yeah. So um, with the slats, I lost about three or four miles per hour, but I also lost that on the other end as well. So I can touch down at about 33, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, I can't ever yeah. see that. It takes some practice and I'm getting comfortable with it kind of, but um, yeah, so the wing, you know, this has been a whole nother side project. I built the standard wing and I flew it for almost a year and a half and loved it. I mean, it, it was such a fun plane with that wing. There was nothing wrong with it, but as the nature of experimental, I wanted to try uh, some stuff out. So this is a little bit bigger than an STI wing, a little bit, a little bit fatter and a little bit longer overall. And then we put brackets in it so we could accommodate the slats. It's awesome. The most unbelievable thing is when the slats are off, it actually is a faster wing than the, this, the Super Sport wing. Yeah. That really surprised me. And that's because it, it unloads and you're able to get the nose down and cruise and you pick up about four miles per hour. Yeah, and that's funny because you called me right after you did yeah. your first test yeah. flight. And for those of you that don't know, my plane has Kit Fox's STI wing, which is a stole inspired wing. Basically, it's a little longer of a cord, a little thicker cord, a little more under camber. It's basically a higher lift profile, so it's better at low speeds. And what blew me away was when I put that on was 
where my old plane would kind of just be dragging through the air and I'd maybe have to add a little flaps to try to get it to where it wanted to like plane out or if it was a boat, it like never got on step, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, these wings, the bigger one, it just pops up and it goes. And I noticed that my cruise didn't drop. In fact, I got more cruise and it just feels happier. So it seems like the little bit bigger wing on these the newer, heavier kit foxes is the way to go. Well, and you figure like you're just, you were talking about Ty's plane and it's the same wing on a four that's on a five, six, seven standard wing. Yeah. So you think about it, the plane got almost 200 pounds heavier and the wing stayed the same. So I think it is happier with a bigger wing. And you really notice it more as you get up higher in elevation. When you're up cruising, you know, up above 7,000 feet, it really felt like you're all holding a climb all the time with the other wing. And I thought it was my, I had a Model 5 with a light homing on it, and I thought it was a result of that big heavy engine. And I just thought it was a characteristic of that plane. So I was really surprised to see it with this one, because when I finished it, it came in at about 828. Yeah. It's pretty pretty good. That's for, good. For yeah. what I outfitted it with. And so I was surprised to still see that characteristic. And with this wing, it doesn't do it at all. You're flat, if almost not even like a one degree nose down almost. And so it does, like you said, feels happier flying along like that. Um, we did gain some weight with the wing. Um, overall, we went up to, with the slats, slats add 15 pounds. The wing, I think we're at 872 now. Sounds so, right. So, if you compare it to, you know, a 915 STI build, I think it's pretty close weight-wise. Yeah. yeah. And really quick, going back to the engine. So, it's a snowmobile engine and what? It's an inline four-cylinder. Yeah, so it's a, about a thousand cc inline four cylinder four stroke. You know, you say snowmobile engine, everyone thinks you're putting a two stroke yeah. in there, but it is a four stroke, five valves, um, and it loves our high RPM. So it runs a lot like a two stroke, like that. It's got a smoother power band, but it runs like the RPMs you run it, you, it's very similar to running a two stroke. And then the gearbox is what makes this possible, and that's from Teal Jenkins at Skytrax designed a gearbox specifically to mount up to this engine. So you're not using like an adapter plate and then a Rotex gearbox, or it's a design made specifically for this engine. It works great. I mean, they put this on 300 horsepower versions of this, and that is an option also with this engine, is you can put a turbo on it and boost it up to 300 horsepower. You got the same wheels as me, the Behringers. Behringer wheels and brakes, uh, the TK1 Chuck Monster landing gear, the carbon concept slats. Uh, I outfitted this with the GRT Avionics, which I really like. They're okay. uh, real, real easy install. It doesn't have as many peripheral boxes that you have to mount everywhere. Everything's kind of contained in the screen, in the one, you know, EFIS itself. So it was a pretty, I wouldn't say easy install because I did all the wiring harness myself, but it made sense and the support on that was great. Um, I did like the Garmin, uh, was it uh, two, was it the GTR 200B? I think. Oh, for the radio? Radio, because it has a standby and the Bluetooth capability, so I put that in. And then on the other side, I just put in an iPad, uh, iPad Pro, uh, I think it's 11 inch with a Guardian uh, mount that supplies power and a fan. Yeah, the fan's so, huge, because yeah. they'll overheat. And some other custom things, there's a lot of carbon fiber. Obviously for this install, there was no firewall forward kit. So I had to come up with an engine mount, a header, a air box, and then a cowling. So this cowling is pretty unique. I'm real proud of this one. So my favorite cowling on a kit box was from the early Model 5. Uh, it was, they called it the short cow. It was a Rotax cowling. And it has this body line, this bump on it. And so I got one of those, but it was too short for this application. So I took the Model, seven boot cow yeah and kind of made it work with the model five made a mold and i carried that body line into the boot cow probably would never do it again but it's super light the whole thing weighs like seven pounds so it's it's pretty, pretty awesome. awesome it is liquid cooled so we got a radiator uh the initial you know working out the bugs was the oil was getting too hot and that's because the snowmobile that runs in a different environment. So we added an oil cooler and that fixed that issue. Just finished a carbon fiber turtle deck. It's not even finished, it still needs paint. And that's to accommodate the bigger wing. The other uh, turtle deck, the flap runs came in in a different location. So instead of cutting extra holes, I just made a new one. And some other carbon fiber pieces everywhere I could. The floor boards are all carbon fiber. And then I did do an extended baggage that goes all the way back, an extra bay. And obviously you don't want to put anything heavy back there, but if you have like, uh, skis or slats. You want to stick your slats back in there in the baggage compartment, you can tuck them back in there. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. If you don't mind me asking, all said and done, what are you into it for a brand new airplane? It's hard because I had a lot of, uh, you know, did the videos and the build on YouTube for this. And so I had a lot of uh, sponsorship help on the, on some of the stuff like the avionics. 
But if you had to buy everything, I think you're probably right around 90. 90 grand. 90, yeah. All said and done for a brand new that's, plane that... You figure the firewall forward on a 915, I probably saved $40,000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't super, I mean, it's not cheap and, and I didn't really go fully budget on the plane because I have five of these engines just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I have built another, had another one built up that I spent a lot of money having built up to accommodate a turbo. So there is some money that's been put in the firewall forward for sure, but it's come a long ways with the um, options out there from like BD turnkey engines. They have like the full electronics for it with the ECU wiring harness. And he's got all kinds of options you can do. Makes the install a lot easier. The airbox is kind of the one thing you still have to figure out on your own, but there's an engine mount available from BD Turnkey, header. That was a big one that I was like dreading trying to figure out because I can weld, but my quality of welding does not reach the header. You know, no, like, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not there. So I'd have to have that done. And uh, between um, uh, Ken and Brian, they designed this header and it's worked really well. So. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been an awesome learning experience and a, and a really fun project. I've had it, I finished it about almost two years ago. So wow. it's been fine for about two years and I still haven't hit 200 hours on it yet. So it seems to be down getting modifications all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, always tweaking yeah. on it. Yeah, so we're, we're only at um, maybe 20 hours with this wing on it. Okay. So it's, that's a pretty new, new yeah. uh, change. So, and so far I really like it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, the other thing that's totally unique to this is these carbon fiber wing strut fairings. Oh, so yeah. We replaced the, uh, the plastic ones and yep. saved another seven pounds right there. So. Yeah. So that's one thing on my plane and, and pretty much all kit foxes. We have a one inch chromoly tube that is the wing strut. And when you see the shape to it, that's a fairing that goes on the outside. And the plastic, like Brian was saying, is it's heavy. It's heavy. And, it's, heavy I, and yeah. it's hard to finish. Um, I mean, yours looks good, but it's hard to do that to finish out because it has extrusion rib. Yeah, like, I like sanded marks all on. those off. Oh, it takes forever. And these were finished quality when they come up, come from, um, it comes from DC Composites, and uh, he makes them specifically for the kit box. And the joining piece down at the bottom, I mean, that's all worked out. He's got a 3D printed piece on the back that allows you to fold the wing without poking a hole in it. And I'm waiting, I'm very uh, excited to get um, bearings for the shocks. And okay. So, those are going to be sent out probably in a week or two. We're going to test those for a while, and then those are going to be available also. And they're, I'm hoping to pick up a couple more miles per hour. So awesome. at least look cool. You know. Oh, carbon, they match the, uh, the strut bearings. That's worth something. Yeah, and then you went know, to the detail doing, you know, these aren't part of that kit, but I, I went ahead and did the jury strut just because I, and the also for the tail. Oh, yeah. She's slippery. <laughs> awesome. Well, Brian. Thank you yeah, for sharing yeah. that. And for anyone that's interested in learning a little bit more, you documented the entire build series of this, right? The whole build, yeah. So go over and check out Project Kit Fox, his YouTube channel, give him a subscribe, and you can check out a lot more of what he's doing. And also see kind of some of our flying adventures from a, another perspective, which is fun. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed nerding out with me on Brian's airplane. And before I wrap this out, I do want to give a quick shout out and thank you to my friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring yet another one of my videos. And for those of you that don't know, Squarespace is the ultimate way to build a website and run your business. They have award-winning templates. They're super easy to tweak and change into your own beautiful professional looking website that's optimized for both desktop as well as mobile. And they have features for every industry. So it doesn't matter what you're trying to do with your website, be it an online store, a personal blog, your own digital business card, whatever it is you're trying to do, you're gonna be able to do it with Squarespace and they also sell domains. So they truly are the one-stop shop for everything websites. So if you haven't yet, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you go to purchase, make sure you use code Trent Palmer. That'll get you 10% off and it helps me out a little bit in the process. Thank you again, Squarespace for sponsoring this one. And you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one.